All right, back inside the First Edward Weather Center, Mike Lyons with an update on Hurricane Irene quickly becoming a dangerous storm. Top winds now 100 miles per hour. It's a Category 2, and look how the thunderstorms are just exploding with the system. It's very likely that this will become a Category 3 storm perhaps as early as tomorrow. The latest suite of computer model guidance is in. It continues to look very good for South Florida. I'll show you the model guidance in just a second. First, the special 830 advisory winds up to 100 miles per hour, now a Category 2 storm. The computer models, they continue to look good for South Florida. Nearly all of the models now take the storm east. The one outlier continues to be the GFDL, but it continues to shift toward the east. Comprehensive team coverage of Hurricane Irene tonight at 11. Found the bail. Oh, oh. Woo. Hey, Bongo. Dennis joins us now with the latest forecast track just out by the NHC. Dennis? Yeah, James, and that is the big question. And if you look over the last six hours, this storm has exploded. We call it rapid intensification. This has gone from a minimal hurricane to a category two and quite possibly much stronger hurricane over the next 12 to 24 hours. Problem is storm surge, especially as you get into coastal areas, a large developing storm like that. Not only do you have the waves and the seas rising, but then you may have winds in excess of 130 miles an hour in the Bahamas. This could very easily be one of the most destructive hurricanes in the Bahamas they have seen in a long time. Right now, winds of 100 miles an hour. This is a Category 2 hurricane. It slowed down a bit, west-northwest at 11 miles an hour. Here is the track, expected to be Cat 3, 120 miles an hour by tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. Extend it right through the central and northern Bahamas, and this is ugly. Anywhere from Nassau through Eleuthera, Abaco, quite possibly looking at a Category 4 hurricane with winds of 135 miles an hour. After that, the track has not changed much, and we didn't think it would. As we go through time, still a major hurricane. Right now, landfall is expected to be somewhere along the Myrtle Beach area. However, in the next hour, we're going to be getting new data from the Gulf Stream, and that's going to give us a much better idea if there's any chance of this bumping to the west. That's something we'll talk about in detail coming up in just a couple of minutes. James. Irene reached hurricane strength as it moved across Puerto Rico this morning with winds as high as 75 miles an hour. The storm was centered about 25 miles west of San Juan. While still a tropical storm on Sunday, Irene downed trees and caused widespread power outages in the U.S. Virgin Islands. The governor declared a state of emergency there. Over the weekend, the storm caused flooding on the island of Antigua. At first, Irene was forecast to pass south of Puerto Rico. But the storm shifted and is passing directly over the island. The hurricane is then expected to approach Hispaniola, shared by the Dominican Republic and Haiti. The storm track is still sketchy, but Irene could also hit Florida by the end of the week. John Belmont, Associated Press. Hurricane Irene, and we have exclusive expert analysis you will only find right here at the Weather Channel. And this is turning out to be a very dangerous storm with far-reaching impacts. We have extended our live coverage. Weather Center continues. But the point, even, even a couple of our changes is rather insignificant. It's basically holding steady state uh, at the present time. But what we see on the satellite gives us an idea to believe this thing is uh, definitely going to be developing here. So 
Notice the change in the hurricane strength. Category 3, a bona fide Cat 3 at 125 miles an hour. Crossing east of Jacksonville, still Cat 3. 150 is Cat 3 east of Wilmington, North Carolina, and it could still be that strong as it approaches the Outer Banks. Whether it makes landfall or not, uh, we're certainly not ready to commit on that, but that, and that is an absolute possibility, or it may just skim off to your east. Of recent note, in the last couple of hours, right in there, you can certainly see the eye of the hurricane showing up on the infrared satellite imagery. We still have a very very good breathing circulation, so we think this storm uh, has reason to intensify. It doesn't look like it's rapidly intensifying, certainly, but it has a chance uh, to blow as we go through the next couple of days. And what's interesting, uh, certainly in the last couple of pictures even, is notice on this east side here, just a huge blow-up of thunderstorms uh, in this eastern semicircle here. And it's not uncommon to kind of see this irregular pattern before eventually this whole thing kind of fills in around the eye. So you, you, you kind of read the satellite imagery uh, almost like you would a road map in time. And, and things that you expect to see as you get closer to a city, for example, we expect to see as we get a developing hurricane. And that this is one of those things right here. And uh, you can see that we have a lot of deep convection in and around that center. Wave setup, always an issue when you have those winds out ahead of the storm from the southeast. They're already pushing big waves up uh, east of the northern Bahamas now. And these are going to make their way to the Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina coast late tomorrow and on during the nighttime hours. So a lot of you will want to get into the water because of the heat for Florida with an offshore wind with a hurricane in your east, but don't be fooled. Those waves are going to be very, very dangerous. I'm going to bring in our hurricane specialist, Brian Norcross, who can attest to the situation and what I'm talking about. But we're going to talk about the steering and why it's so difficult when you go three, four days out to get something exact. Exactly where is it going? Yeah, so what are, what are the computers doing? The computer models we yeah. talk about all the time. They're trying to simulate the atmosphere and equations. Right? Yeah, and it's not easy because they're taking data that's even off of this water vapor. Right, and most of the ones we look at, all but two actually, that go to this, is the whole entire Earth, the global models, that's what they're called, right? So they're, they're representing this, and it's an approximation, in the models of approximation. So, for example, they're approximating in the model this dip in the jet stream right here, they're approximating this little thing here, they're approximating another one out, uh, out there. So we're going to talk about these various dips and how they are going to come into play. But right now what's happening is the hurricane is driving around this high pressure. There's that dip you saw right there. Here's this next one out here. Now how is the hurricane going to interact with these? This one is now cutting off the nose a little bit and that's been allowing the hurricane to be, you know, move a little bit to the north of due west, right? Well here on Thursday, though, so this is day after tomorrow, here's another dip setting up here and the thinking is that Irene would be in there. Now, exactly how does the hurricane interact with that dip there? So we're representing the fact that you can't rule out a direct hit on North Carolina, or does it glance off to the right. uh, east? Or, or a weaker influence would, would take it farther west, the right. stronger influence. And then we have, where, we, where I'm going here, the most important dip in play here, which comes along, this is the Saturday time frame, with Irene in the vicinity of Cape Hatteras. And now this dip, the computers are indicating it's going to set up farther back, and that's why there's the concern for the hurricane doing either one of those uh, as a most likely. Either of those are very damaging for some part of the populated sections of the northeastern United States. And, it, you know, obviously it's possible if the hurricane is slow, the dip gets farther east, the hurricane goes offshore, but of the scenarios that the models paint, none of them avoid a, a, a situation that, that is not dangerous uh, and potentially very damaging for some part of the populated mid-Atlantic and northeast, and mm -hmm. or northeast. Yeah, and stick around, guys, obviously we're gonna show you that cone. Uh,